Okay. So, a very good evening to all the participants. I welcome you all to another interesting session of uh, MM series Reloaded. Today we have with us Dr. Gaurang Gaikwad as usual and we have one more senior teacher from North side. So, it will be an amazing session. So, let us wait for Dr. Gaurang to join us. For the new participants who are uh, listening to the MM series for the first time, uh, we have uh, the two books by Dr. Gorang, uh, which has been published already. One is the Decoding Mental Rubrics especially on to understand different mind rubrics from the repertory so it's a gem kind of book and the second book is on nozodes and sarcodes yeah, roughly 20 to 25 nozodes and 20 to 25 sarcodes are given in this book so it's one one of its kind you will not find this kind of information in any other book so i think these both books are uh, must must for uh, all the homeopaths so who are, those who have not got these copies of the book yet you can uh, write to me at the homeopathic hub or dr pratik jain at gmail.com and uh, i'll help you with the books So as uh, Dr. Gaurang told in the earlier sessions, we would like you to tell us if you would, for some speakers, which we, you would like us to invite in the MM series. So you can write to us if you have any suggestions. We would like to bring different great homeopaths from different parts of India, from different parts of the world, so that each one of us can learn from them, get benefited from them. Hi, Dr. Bharam. Yeah, we are uh, live on YouTube. We are live. Yeah. Just one minute. Come on. You can see my screen now. Yes. 
Okay. <clears throat> so, a few people are joining us today. How are you doing, Dr. Pratik? Very well. Okay. So, I hope most of you have received our case for today. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me, Pratik? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's audible. Perfect. Voice okay. Is perfect. Okay. So, I hope most of you have received the case. <clears throat> yes, most of you have received the case. So, maybe uh, we can uh, start our talk. So, few of our colleagues have joined uh, all across um, India. We have a special guest today. And I will invite uh, him uh, towards the end of my talk. <clears throat> okay, so just like uh, normal days, we are going to start with a case. I'm going to tell you the case, and then we will try to um, um, learn something about the case. And then at the end of it, we can uh, talk a little bit about the remedy. Just give me a minute. Uh, a minute. Eek. How many people have joined us right now, Dr. Pratik? Hello? On YouTube, not just a second, I'll tell you. Around uh, 170 people are watching now. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. <clears throat> okay. So let me just open a kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to. Stream yard, share a link, share a link. Okay, okay, so <clears throat> are you ready? So let us start the case uh, for today and um, let's try to analyze. I have few of my friends who have joined us from all across the world. We have some people from India, Brazil, Europe, and hopefully some more continents. So the case for today. We are talking about a case. This is a case I saw in my clinic in Mumbai a um, few months before lockdown. And I remember this case was a case of a 50 year old man who came to see me. <clears throat> he looked in a total, total state of uh, kind of a dullness and lowness. <clears throat> Almost a kind of a hopeless, uh, given up state. He looked like his face had a kind of a state of um, you know blank dull just nothing remaining kind of uh, look 50 year old man uh, this guy he came with the main problems of uh, itching in the genitals and ringworm and as you know ringworm can be very very difficult in uh, <clears throat> today's time to prescribe and he had been to many many allopathic doctors and uh, there wasn't any improvement and that's why he came to see me and he tells that there's a lot of itching in the genitals and um, his eyes were totally swollen and a lot of swelling below the eyes or eyelids also. He says, I'm very obsessed about cleanliness and uh, I'm already a case of depression 
and obsessive compulsive disorder <clears throat> i'm already taking psychiatric medicines i'm very very low when i have this and uh, he looks at me and asks me do you think i will get better doctor and when patients ask you you have to look into their eyes and tell them yes you will it's a very important phase when patient asks you questions it's important to look into their eyes and say yes and you will learn this uh, homeopathic psychotherapy and hopefully at some point uh, we will talk about it and uh, have some sessions on it <clears throat> so a strong obsessive uh, compulsive state wants everything very clean wash his hands constantly avoids people touching him and his belonging <clears throat> he doesn't like anyone touching his uh, belongings too much he doesn't like it at all he constantly washes anything he washes washes washing washing cleaning 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 he says i become mad i become absolutely mad cleaning <clears throat> so i ask him how what is the effect of these problems on you and he says i've gone into a depression i started isolating myself from the world i've detached ek kisi se nahi milta hu i don't meet anyone i've just isolated myself detached i don't meet anyone um i don't shake hands with anyone i don't let anyone sit next to me i feel that disease will never go away i keep thinking keep thinking this fungal infection when will it go when will it go when will it go kabhi jayega kabhi jayega kabhi jayega constant thinking 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 <clears throat> and uh, he has taken a lot of psychiatric treatment you know in india we don't talk so much about mental health but mental health is a very important fear, uh, area and um, homeopathy has a beautiful scope in it hmm? so as homeopaths we need to learn this art and um, hopefully at some point i will teach you about how to treat psychiatric cases also <clears throat> so i ask him about his mental state he says that um i'm i I'm, i don't know there is a lot of guilt within me a lot of anger i i i don't feel like meeting anyone i have become totally away from people i've detached from people i sit at home i don't do anything my memory has gone i'm making mistakes i i have no expectations from anyone i have just given up on life and i really <clears throat> don't have anything to do with anyone anymore he says this is a state <clears throat> i ask him any other problem he says i used to get dry cough in the morning uh, difficulty in hearing in left ear known case of hypertension also past history of uh, malaria and uh, psoriasis uh, in the family and asthma physical generals very very hot patient <clears throat> thirst uh, is is not uh, that much craves a uh, sweets a lot itching over the glands penis burning after washing constipated um offensive sweat so there's a lot of offensiveness also and uh, insomnia sleeps only for 3 hours so for him the worst time is uh, typically at night and uh, very very dull and low and keeps looking down while talking and says i'm detached from the world totally detached <clears throat> total total detachment from the world and constant washing and totally depressed and his sweat smells very badly constant itching in the genitals itching 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 so this is the state of the patient <clears throat> so how do we analyze this case let's let's try to analyze this case maybe someone of you could analyze um, um this case from your uh, view point so 
usual suspects uh, some people are uh, writing about the rubrics washing desire um um despair touch aversion to this is the rubrics but maybe <clears throat> yes maybe i'll just show you what rubrics i've taken in this case and uh, <clears throat> maybe you'll get an idea so this is a very interesting case and i have in this case used uh, fatak repertory very interestingly let's see <clears throat> so some uh, suggestions from people sulfur arsenic syphilinum sorinum mm -hmm. some more suggestions i've already sent the cases to everyone so <clears throat> you will be having the cases most probably <clears throat> but i'll <clears throat> still tell you the whole case again it's a case of fungal uh, infection with ocd uh, with lot of itching in the genitals since fa last 5 years ocd wants to wash hands constantly doesn't let anyone touch uh, the area at all has a extreme aversion to meeting people avoids uh, meeting people also Uh, effect of the problem on him um, uh, <clears throat> he isolated himself from everyone and doesn't feel like meeting anyone uh, doesn't let anyone sit in his place and uh, lot of fear lot of fear fear and phobia so keeps thinking about the fungal infection a lot constant breathing guilt about his uh, disease and uh, he feels that this is due to certain thing um <clears throat> has detached himself from the world and doesn't feel like doing anything uh, with anyone anymore dry cough in the morning and uh, difficulty in hearing uh, some past history of uh, hypertension very very hot patient cannot sleep at night night is the worst time for him and lot of itching in genitals <clears throat> so some more suggestion arsenic kali kar pulsatilla okay so i'll tell you what i did i i used fatak repertory in this case and in cases where are there are short cases i i look at what are the main things in the case and uh, one of the most important thing in this case <clears throat> is his reaction and what is his reaction to the skin problems how did he respond so he totally detached himself from the world are you understanding he detached himself from the world this kind of detachment <clears throat> this is typically the rubric i took so the rubric first rubric i took from fatak is unsocial are you all with me unsocial number one rubric the next rubric i took was uh, yes a lot of despair doesn't feel like there's so a hopelessness despair despair of recovery next rubric i took was all symptoms aggravated at night and finally <clears throat> this constant desire to wash wash impulse to so when you put this in uh, the repertory sheet <clears throat> in fatak repertory you will basically get Uh, only one remedy coming up and you can see how artistically i have uh, used the repertory yes you see the rubric unsocial it has only two remedies interestingly hmm. yes so i have given the remedy to our patient uh, syphilinum uh, and i have given syphilinum 1m okay just for two days why 1m because you see whenever i see a strong mental and physical connect i generally like to use 1m and uh, <clears throat> also along with it you should also remember nozod should always be prescribed in a little higher potency at least 200 but generally 1m is a good potency so With help of it, uh, just within two months, the itching reduced by fifty percent. Even his hearing, which has gone, which I reduced, and he became calm. He started interacting with people. See why homeopathy is so special uh, treatment, and why it's important because it 
doesn't only help the physical state it causes a change in state manjri asked me unsocial is common rubric not really not every patient in uh, who has a ringworm will totally detach himself from meeting the world this is typical of him and this he is having for last 5 years and ringworm he is having only for few months so this is constitutional symptom and then almost now 9 months have passed and uh, he is remarkably improved remarkably improved so welcome to today's talk and today we are going to learn the materia medica of syphilinum and uh, in next um, hopefully half an hour you will learn syphilinum in depth and um, i want to tell you that nosodes and sarcodes and bowel nosodes are very very important in practice yeah. <clears throat> so what is the main genius of uh, syphilinum the main genius for me of syphilinum is lot of weakness and very few symptoms whenever there is a syphilitic state uh, or syphilitic miasm in the background and very few symptoms think about syphilinum typically syphilinum would be a remedy which uh, one will not be able to prescribe on local indication syphilinum patient will you will never prescribe syphilinum based on symptom like pain in the knee aggravated uh, uh, at 4 pm better by warm better so you will not see a local characteristic you will have to see a generalized state syphilinum also i use very often in ophthalmic pathologies especially a chronic ophthalmic pathology it is often useful in stopping the progress of the disease for example progressive atrophy of optic nerve premature macular degeneration retinitis pigmentosa in given up states you should think about um, syphilinum and always cold bathing ameliorate is a very important symptom um one doctor has asked uh, genal tattered genal tattered very simple if you want to learn the difference between sorinum and syphilinum remember syphilinum night aggravation sorinum what sorinum doesn't have night aggravation and the miasm and the miasm <clears throat> another very important uh, remember in sorinum sorinum is the chilliest remedy and another thing sorinum always very hungry no hunger no sorinum and one more very important thing in many cases of sorinum i have seen dreams of stools uh, i have used this very often so i told you about chronic ophthalmic pathology i am telling you ophthalm because i use it a lot also in many many neurological cases i had a very interesting case of um, facial palsy huh? facial palsy with one sided palsy with difficulty in speech twitching of muscle and aphasia um beautifully syphilinum one dose one m in two weeks the facial palsy bell's palsy improve very important for musculoskeletal pathology also rheumatoid arthritis chronic rheumatoid arthritis with typical pain sciatica pain bone pains you know bone pains is important at night think about syphilinum syphilinum <clears throat> remember syphilinum will also have a sepia like saddle cpi like discoloration butterfly discoloration on the face and the teeth are teeth are decayed ha huh? edges everything is distorted so tongue is distorted teeth are distorted there is a single crack a huh? longitudinal crack there is a double crack on the tongue so on on both sides of the tongue there is a longitudinal crack and i've used this very often all symptom better by heat remember it is very important for one of the worst fissures with constipation in very bad case of fissure with or constipation think about syphilinum another very important thing total sleeplessness syphilinum total loss of appetite for many months think of syphilinum when there are not enough symptom but you seen some miasmatic symptom think about this remedies very very difficult cases of pcod ovarian tumors ovarian cyst slightest touch aggravates remember medorinum always feels better by pressure in ovarian tumor and ovarian cyst and finally peculiar offensive leucorrhea with itching in the genitals <clears throat> syphilinum also very important remedy in collagen vascular disorders like wegner's sinus discharges where there is a lot of destruction inside 
green discharges deep structural damage remember there is a structural damage the disease the pathology is uh, going very fast this is syphilis most of the symptoms aggravated lying on right side and aggravated humid weather remember syphilis serrated teeth uh, remember serrated teeth also syphilis and medorhinum also in fact many many nosors have this symptom let me show you this in complete repertory let me show you seat teeth serrated you can see biggest remedy syphilinum bacillinum medorhinum tuberculinum so many nosodes are there huh? <clears throat> one of the main states of syphilinum is despair despair no hope at all <clears throat> total despair of recovery i will not get better and even when the patient is improving or during convalescence when the disease is going on for example during covid times covid has happened but after covid weakness and in weakness they say i don't think i will get better think about syphilinum but if patient is chilly think about sorinum because syphilinum sorinum come very close very very important state of syphilinum is that they have a self destructive trait they they destroy they destroy their own self self destructive dreams of his own disease in the dream syphilis there is also dreams of being buried alive like chelidonium by the way i made a video on chelidonium i hope you uh, read it uh, in uh, you watch it on my youtube channel dreams of buried alive also there syphilis dreams of skeleton huh? again thanks to dr juhi for making this uh, fantastic presentation and i hope you um use it project ask how to repeat nosodes nosodes shouldn't be repeat with very often um one dose wait and watch and only when the patient's improvement is not happening you can repeat the dose in chronic case maybe once in 2 3 months uh fear of night because uh, very very scared of getting up because getting up means a lot of exhaustion night is the worst time they are scared of night <clears throat> scared of getting up in the morning also because of the fear because the night is the worst time for them fear of going to sleep fear of paralysis and and syphilinum is a very important remedy for paralysis also for stroke patients <clears throat> so there's a lot of fear fear of suffering fear of paralysis fear of suffering very important one very lesser known thing about syphilinum that you should know is that in their life there has been some very strong frightful thing a huge shock and after that lot of their problems started a little bit like opium but opium the pathology is not syphilitic so fear of fright shock after think about syphilis munaza vaguas night amelioration medorhinum yes medorhinum always better at night sunset ameliorate how can we differentiate syphilis and moxol see syphilis is very self destructive very despair while moxol is very rebellious revolutionary okay Uh, at a much later stage uh, they develop syphilinum patient they develop a kind of indifference where nothing affects them any often and they become non reactive and they become indifferent kuch bhi nahi karna hai kuch nahi karna hai kisi se indifference about personal appearance they don't even care about their looks anymore what the use of look dikhne se kya karna hai kya matlab hai indifference towards everything everything in difference they feel detached now you know the unsocial element i spoke to you about and said you know they feel detached kuch nahi kisi se kuch nahi lena dena in different to relations so in cpa cpa always undertake thing opposed to intention mujhe mujhe aaj mummy ke pair nahi dabane 
तो भी आप बोल रहे हो तो दबाना पड़ रहा है दैट इज अंडरटेक थिंग अपोज टू इंटेंशन सीपीएम सिपिलिन हम जस्ट के नॉट फील एनीथिंग दे आर जस्ट फार अवे फ्रॉम रियालिटी प्लेजर इवन प्लेजर दे कांट फील Sometimes sifilinum uh, patients can also have a lot of perverse uh, symptoms, like they have perverse sexuality. They they can be very deceiving. They can be kleptomaniacs. One of patient who was a case of uh, liver failure, who initially did well on sifilinum, uh, had a habit of kleptomania and uh, had a habit of blaming everyone else and had a habit of not taking responsibility at all. Responsibility aversion to is also sifilinum. In fact, that's where fluoric acid and sifilinum comes close. Esteban Leberzec. Difference between Heliboros and Esteban from uh, I think you are in Argentina, right? Anyways, the difference between Heliboros is see, um, it's a good question. See, Heliboros the there are different levels of uh, different. First of all, Heliboros is a very very sensitive remedy. so the the indifference that heliboros has developed is after a very strong emotional sensitivity where they just kind of after that deep sensitivity they become obtuse they almost go in a state of shock or numbness and then they almost stop feeling uh, anything and that's when they develop a lot of brain related pathology or um, a story about the kent has written a story in heliboros where he has written about uh, a woman has been accused of uh, robbery but she has not done and after that she kind of goes into a pneumonia and hydrocephalus so heliboros belonging to staphysegria family there is a strong um, unjustly accusation aggravates do you want me to show you see repertory the whole repertory i know in and out okay so i can just teach you remedies through repertory that is the beauty okay just have a look accusation unjust aggravates you can see heliboros given by herring another remedy staphysegria so two remedies belong to ranunculaceae family this is a center point of uh, ranunculaceae family meri galti nahi to bhi mujhe bol rahe ho this is what it is okay i hope you are getting an idea <coughs> Okay, let's come back. Kleptomaniac. Yes, sifilinum can also be kleptomaniacal. At some point, they can also be very, very lamenting uh, in their state. They also have a state of liar. In fact, sifilinum can also be like opium. Can come close to opium. But difference between that is that opium, as you know, opium has a deep sensitivity of suffering and pain. Yeah? That is opium. A uh, morphinum. Morphinum. also very important remedy especially chronic constipation i use morphinum very often alcoholus also a remedy alcohol is a remedy who makes friends with an enemy okay and viratrum but viratrum is is as a deceptive guy uh, you know there is a very interesting series which is come on indian um, uh, channel it's called a scam uh, harshad mehta i saw it recently it was a very interesting and the entire series is a story of viratrum album it's a story about how how a person from a very simple uh, family in mumbai who doesn't have money but he wants to be someone huge in very short time but not through the right way by cheating by lying by using the hook or crook method it's a story of viratrum album just watch it and if you want to learn viratrum just watch scam and you will you will understand the whole material medic of viratrum maybe some day i will teach you viratrum okay love perversity so just like medorinum uh, sifilinum also has a state where they have a perverted sexuality okay their sexuality uh, patients or uh, humans who 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 are very perverted sexuality? They they think of uh, doing sex in a very weird manner. They want to um, do sexual fantasies with animals and things like that. That is sifilinum. That's the kind of state of sifilinum. Sado masochistic. They don't feel moral affections at all. They don't feel moral affections at all. Totally antisocial. Totally antisocial. The sifilinum. reproaches others yes 
they will blame others they cannot take responsibility at all fancy is lascivious perverted perverted sexuality a little bit like hyoscyamus so the secret of a nosod is that it will have many symptoms of different remedies okay this is tormenting uh, fancies lascivious another very important thing is their memory and intellect is affected where they forget everything before their illness and this is often uh, there is a history of mental fright or shock uh, behind it but especially the intellect uh, goes away forgetful for what has happened but remembers past events simply no especially forget names of books many of our students they forget my name of books decoding mental rubrics materia medica sar code no zone they forget the name they ask me do you have this book that book you should get a dose of syphilis forgetfulness of names um, remembers everything previous to disease think about it and in cases of paraplegia paralysis paraplegia um with aphasia think about so i hope you are getting an idea about uh, syphilis also <clears throat> so what are the very very important symptoms i will i'm just putting down some of them for you uh, hereditary illness remember in genetic diseases and hereditary illnesses think about syphilinum no hope alcoholic uh, syphilinum another very important symptom of syphilinum is there is a history of addiction history of drug addiction or alcohol addiction in the family so the father is also having drugs the son is also having the drugs this is typically syphilis janith shahs where can you get this books you can email me janith syphilis another very important thing you should know is syphilis has got the worst kind of headaches and with the headache they cannot sleep at night when you get this type of headache where they can't sleep at night and you have given remedy which is helping think about syphilis uh, another very important thing uh, that you should know is that this washing desire constantly is is a concomitant to physical symptoms think about syphilis use it in high potency linear headache so patient tells you i get pain radiating this to here to here here to here in a line think about syphilis very very bad cases of ozena think about syphilis clark has written, uh, written some causative factors and the causative factors are sun aggravation you didn't know this syphilis has a strong sun aggravation damp weather aggravation someone asked me differentiation medorhinum and syphilinum remember medorhinum has damp weather amelioration okay thunderstorms also very strong aggravation for syphilis uh p sankaran has written a very interesting case uh, you should know this case i i can never forget this case it's a case of child of 3 months which was brought to p sankaran and uh, the father says that as soon as he was born he was screaming and shouting like so crazily that he's not stopped screaming at all since 3 months since he's born and based on um, um the symptoms uh, where he would be sleepless at night and shrieking weeping since childhood screaming since childhood he gave syphilinum uh, 1m and uh, it was totally cured uh, fatak prescribed this remedy uh, because p sankaran referred this case to fatak very interestingly swan has written in his book and uh, swan says that he gave crying infants when they develop propensity immediately after birth not stopping at all with some kind of pathology one dose of syphilinum cm remember syphilinum <clears throat> many many cases like that and i can uh, go on for a very very long time but i'm going to try to finish the talk soon so i can invite my guest very soon very important for baldness so alopecia areata hair falls think about uh, syphilis um diplopia so ophthalmic cases you should think about syphilis also 
yes uh, renal uh, related pathology aggravated after urination remember ameliorative of urination is lycopodium and medorhinum and um, remember in female genitals always better by touching finger or by even by coition think about it also very important cardiac remedy pain at the base to apex at night bone exhaustive even bone tumors bone related tumors even metastasis going to bones think about syphilinum and uh, frozen shoulders typically think about it also very very bad case of ulcers when mercsol fails think about it extreme sleeplessness when all remedies fail think about syphilis nair repertory has given a very interesting rubric and you know i am i'm mastering nair now and my new book on different repertories is going to come very soon so very interesting rubric arithmetic calculation difficulty in making sorinum syphilinum so in children autistic children only maths is difficult think about it <clears throat> strong confusion in their mind and difficulty in talking and choosing the word word hunting they, their mind state gets affected so very important cases of autism and adhd also um neurological symptoms along with depression so twitchings along with depression think about syphilinum i'm telling you real clinical proving symptoms schmidt has written erratic rheumatism so shifting rheumatism think about it and uh, yes someone said they're better in mountains huh? someone asked me when to use nozod one of the very important thing about nozods is uh, when you're giving a remedy indicated remedy constitutional remedy it's helping not helping you have given many remedies it's helping not helping many many cases difficult chronic cases may require no zodes roberts has given a very interesting rubric cold yet it is not cold weather very chilly one of the main sensations of roberts uh, repertory is as if needles were punctured by great number all over the body syphilinum about to be paralyzed dr sarkar once told me in history of injury along with rheumatoid arthritis worse in summer this is the formula he prescribes syphilinum in i've written about this so much in detail in my new book uh, materia medica of nozodes and sarcodes i hope you have this book if you don't have read it and it will help you a lot if your cases are not improving you should study nozod and sarcode more often in many cases where sulfur fail to act think about syphilinum okay these are some clinical tips of masters um syphilinum and medorhinum come very very close huh? you should know this some uh, important things i will tell you um <clears throat> always worse at night and better inland is uh, medorhinum always compare orum asafoetida okay, kali iodide mercury nitric acid but orum will have a orum personality very honest very responsible asafoetida is hysterical kali iodide is loquacity with jesting mercury is revolutionary nitric acid well nitric acid is typically revengeful so you will be able to differentiate all these things beautifully um succession abscess recurrent abscesses think about uh, syphilinum also compare it with anthracinum but anthracinum will always always and always um have burning there's a very interesting symptom in children's case they there is as if teeth are out of the place so there are as if all the teeth are here there here there think about it. So this is my email ID, Gorang Edgy at the rate gmail dot com, and I have about few hundreds of people who are watching us right now. So I hope you learned something, and I hope you have read my books, Decoding and Materia Medica, Nozod, Sarcode. Nozod and Sarcodes are very, very, very important in practice. If your cases are stuck, blocked, think about using it more often. Um, so the homework for today is you have to read Syphilinum. medorhinum 
Ciprinum, Medorinum, Bacillinum, and Sorinum from Clark Dictionary Materia Medica. So you have to read this tonight and you have to email me before 12 o'clock. Okay. No sleeping tonight till, till you don't read all these four remedies and you have to email me. What did you learn from my lecture today? You can write to me my email. Are you all with me? Are you there? So one very interesting thing I want to tell you uh, before I finish for uh, today. I will just try to find it for you. I had just um, um, done something. So I, I'm, I'm I have something very, very exciting for all of you. I'm coming up with this uh, very, very exciting thing. We are coming up with a workshop for all the nosodes, all the sore codes, and all the bowel nosodes, almost more than 20, 30 remedies together. Uh, during the Dasera and Diwali, where I'm going to teach almost 25, 30 remedies through the case, step by step, all the nosodes, uh, all the uh, sarcodes, and um, it will be like a 10 hour workshop where all of you, whoever wants to join, can join. It will be a 10 hour intensive workshop on nosodes, sarcodes, and bowel nosodes. All bowel nosodes also, like dysentery compound, Morgan Pure. Um, psychotic compound, um, all the nosodes, cephalinum, medorinum, bacillinum, tuberculinum, AVRA, which I use very a lot in um, in COVID times. Sarcodes like insulinum, thyroidinum, uh, adrenalinum, pepsinum, histaminum. So we are coming up with this. I'm working on it uh, night and day. And um, I think it will be a cutting edge workshop. Whoever wa watches this will really learn how to treat uh, difficult cases, obstructed cases. Um, and I, I want to invite all of you. Um, when is it coming? Very soon. Mm -hmm. Coming soon. Coming soon. We'll put up the dates and everything. And I hope that uh, you develop the interest to study it. I will launch it. I will I will announce about it in detail in um, during uh, post Dasera, because always Dasera is something new with blessings of uh, God. So I'm very excited for this and um, excited about sharing many, many new ideas with all of you. And I hope that uh, you, you really, really, all of you, I want every single one of you to join it. And um, there will be a early bookings also because we will have very few seats. You remember, uh, we have only 500 seats and it goes within one or two days, the whole seats are full. So yeah, so this is what it is. Um, Please email me what you learned today. And I think it's a good time to invite our guest for today. Um, Dr. Pratik, let's invite Dr. Pankaj Agarwal for our, um, in our webinar today. How do we um, invite him? Is he can, there? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's with us. You can unmute your uh, mic and uh, camera. But I can, I would talk to him before that. No, no, uh, I'm telling you. Okay. So how are you, Dr. Pankaj? It's a pleasure to have you uh, in, in uh, Materia Medica series uh, with uh, all the students here waiting to listen to you. But really, uh, I appreciate the explanation of Syphilinum just now you spoke on. Uh, really wonderful. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Pleasure is mine. So Dr. Pankaj Agarwal, uh, as you know, I, I spoke to you that um, uh, we have participants from all across the world, um, not just in India, but in Europe and South America, uh, different parts of the world here. And uh, I would I would really like uh, you to maybe before you start your lecture and I'm going to give you your um, time to talk. I would really like uh, you to share a little bit about um, Dr. Pankaj, um, a little bit about your journey in homeopathy, maybe in few words so that um, our our uh, our students will be inspired. Good. Yes. So how did you how did you become an homeopath? Yes. Quick question. Uh, means it was uh, it was uh, by default. My father was a homeopathic doctor, Doctor M L Agarwal, and uh, some twenty years back he passed away in year two thousand. And uh, we 
we are born and we are brought up with homeopathy we know only homeopathy and everything uh, i really cannot remember if i have taken any kind of other medicine than uh, homeopathy so it was a uh, kind of uh, something on platter on me by my father that uh, i became homeopathic doctor and uh, he did not stop here he took me to so many stalwarts that uh, i cannot even imagine if suppose i am the only one uh, earlier but because my father was already there in homeopathy so i was with dr jugal kishore i was with so many and uh, finally uh, i went to kolkata nih i studied there my dipanish two years there you know well i was with dr elm khan sir with yes. whom i have been learning till date and uh, i owe my all success and knowledge to dr elm khan sir bilkul bilkul i i was also lucky then, enough to study with lm khan sir he talks very highly about you but uh, before we go to lm khan sir very quickly i wanted to uh, uh, um uh, ask you about dr ml agarwal because uh, M- dr ml agarwal was one of the stalwarts of homeopathy um, especially in delhi uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, not about the not about uh, how great dr ml agarwal was um, we will not talk about that my interest is always in stories and anecdotes do you remember one or two incidents uh, of him or his uh, his case that made an impact on you and you decided ha bhi ye yahi karna hai mujhe i want to be a homeopath what was that one or two was, strong moments uh, yeah For, the first thing was that his own case and that uh, led him to be homeopathic doctor and uh, we uh, came to know this anecdote from him later when we just grown up some somewhat then uh, <clears throat> he suffered with very severe coryza and okay. uh, he was working with the railways in the medical department there was one uh, dr benerji who used to practice homeopathy along with the job earlier it was like this you know hmm. so i am talking to you means uh, somewhere 70s 80s okay. so he gave my father nakswamika and uh, he so quickly became better you know how homeopathy lightning hmm. effect creates so he used to tell that when nothing worked this medicine worked so fast so i want to be homeopath mm-hmm. then uh, another case why, why did he give nakswamika we don't know because uh, my father temperament is nakswamika acha okay 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 because you can understand he was in railways and he took a complete u turn and he became a homeopath yeah, and he reached yeah. the top means uh, i am sure that i cannot do all those things what he has done because for him i was like uh, given all the formal education and everything and best of mm-hmm. the teacher and best of the doctors so if i do something good nothing great about it means uh, what he did it was all together uh, yeah yeah great job then uh, i can remember uh, one uh, one night it was like 3 4 am somebody hmm. rang the doorbell uh incidentally i woke up and uh, went down i saw one mr pathak who used to be visiting our clinic very often uh, i opened i said what happened at uh, 4 am you are here and he used to shake hands so uh, immediately reflex action my was that i forwarded my hand he said this is the problem means his both the limbs were paralyzed four arms both were paralyzed he said this is not uh, i am not able to use them that is why i have to come at this time to meet dr saab all right i called my father he sat here and he came and he saw him and uh, gave a dose of costicum 200 just a dose and uh, and my father told me go and get some tea so i went up prepared some two three cups of tea and came down and uh, see dr gorang hmm. he took the tea himself like this so costicum 200 single dose it worked mm-hmm. so means i i have seen number of cases with my father about the gangrene and uh, my father used to lo- do lot of uh, work means he was dressing those patients and uh, he was telling everything that how sweet pills created the surgery all those blackened toes they just fallen and he was dressing and patient become all right. so many number of cases i saw with my father became cured with the homeopathic medicine in 
gangrene case. So like this, there are many, many stories. Do you remember any? Do you remember any very, very um, interesting incident with a gangrene case and why he prescribed a remedy in any case of gangrene? <coughs> gangrene. Uh, generally, I saw the effect with the arsenic, which is a very typical indications of the arsenic that uh, he was having a burning pain and which is better by the warm water which he was when dressing so he was able to make out also so just on very simple understanding very simple, yeah yeah yeah, he yeah. Gave arsenic and did wonders and uh, you also spoke about dr jugal kishore and dr jugal kishore is of a special interest to me because uh, as you know my interest in repertory and dr jugal kishore is one of the person who kind of brought repertory to india uh, more or less so can you tell us some something about him how was he as a person how some interesting incident with uh, i tell you he was a uh, he was a very very gem of a person he was mm -hmm. the one it's uh, all all the doctors i have seen if something is told by dr jubal kishore it is like uh, uh, modi of homeopathy i must say everybody will agree with him means i can remember i was studying in chandigarh yeah. holding medical college my principal called me doctor okay bd patel if you know him hmm. so doctor bd patel told me bhai so no just take this check give it to your father because uh, the uh, instructions of the jugal kishore and we cannot disobey his words this was his uh, aura amongst the whole of the home fraternity and uh, one another thing was that uh, jugal kishore uh, dr jugal kishore uh, ji he studied and got uh, blessings from dr gyan majumdar who mm. happened to be the uh, guru of my guru dr lm khan you know it right? yeah 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 he speaks so, very highly about gyan majumdar yes so uh, so much so that the whole clientele of delhi which was of dr uh, gyan majumdar was transferred to dr jugal kishore including the library hmm so we can understand the gravity of the person and i tell you just in few words one case of dr jugal kishore sure uh, he, uh, he said that um, one day uh, i was just sitting in my lawn he used to live in a golfing area of delhi one of the most posh area of delhi and in the uh, somebody some guest came over to see him that lady she was all the time trying to when when they are standing so all the time she is trying to just uh, lifting her heels up and uh, just just like she is uh, comparing the height with dr jugal kishore like i am taller than jugal kishore it was like this this was a body language mm hmm 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 and uh, once when she came to him as a patient he could mm -hmm. remember this and he prescribed platina 200 for that yeah 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 so it was such a wonderful observation by him such a wonderful prescription by him obviously you can understand whatever may be the complaint the result was yeah wonderful. yeah <coughs> so he But, was uh, how, how was he in uh, using the repertory and how would he do it he he would use lot of card repertories or what was it like i heard that he used to take a lot of rubrics um in his uh, cases yes i i worked in his clinic for uh, some of the months and uh, mm -hmm. i used to present the cases uh, to him and uh, it was uh, like i was presenting to another uh, senior one senior assistant uh, to dr jugal kishore and mm -hmm. uh, they are creating that uh, symptom into the rubric and pointing out the numbers you know there is a symptom number in the uh, card repertory and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. cards and do all that till the mm -hmm. computer came and then there after computer came and uh, and so many other uh, students started uh, assisting him dr jugal kishore and they all were working with the computer but the thing was the last till his last day of working he was like a student he was doing some improvement in himself in his books and uh, something betterment to him everything yeah yeah and yeah always inspiration. i think i think this is a very special quality of uh, constantly wanting to learn and being a student sir isn't it yeah yeah that's... which which other homeopaths you learned from one was uh, dr jugal kishore one was your father dr lm khan anyone else who, who you uh, learned from so many and uh, i do not want to mention them because uh, uh, 
I studied the way I wanted to know about homeopathy, which is to be done as per Hahnemann. So rest were uh, so-called Hahnemannian, but not at all Hahnemannian. So okay, okay. means anyone else who really inspired you? I mean, you know, there are people who you one obviously, you know, even myself, I've learned from so many homeopaths, but I normally take names of uh, ten or twelve of them. But there are certain stories that remain. You know, they remain inspired. The reason I ask you is because the stories you tell us is going to remain with on this uh, network and to all these students who are watching forever. We are we are trying to create a homeopathic history for our students. I tell you one very important thing. Uh, in Chandigarh, when I was studying, I was uh, I was uh, those days in Chandigarh there was no such hostel. So mm. because uh, Chandigarh is a place which is a student hub and uh, every yeah. it's day, a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. Beautiful place and uh, beautiful. Uh, they, they give one room to students and uh, all that kind of thing or okay. PG or rental and like this. So we used to be there in one place, and uh, one of my senior means I was in first year, and that senior was in third year. So uh, I started uh, living him with him. So uh, his father was also homeopath practicing Delhi, <clears throat> Doctor Lal Singh. Now he is no more. But then the best thing was I am not talking his prescribing. I am talking his relationship with the patient. You will be surprised to know there there used to be a queue. Hardly you you have been seeing such a long <coughs> queue in homeopathy clinics, and just one visit, and that patient started uh, acknowledging him that Doctor Sahab as his uh, grandfather or a father or Chacha Ji or uh, Mama Ji or something like this. So anything, everybody going to him, and uh, waiting for hours together to see him. And they used to be all right, whatever the way he was prescribing. But the best thing was that how did he do that? What what was what was behind it? What do you <laughs> what was the special quality? I there? understood from him that uh, he used to be very friendly with the patients. You know what's happening with the doctors? Doctors uh, they don't behave like a simple normal human being. They hmm. just take some extra uh, you know edge being doctor. So patients mm -hmm. are not able to identify uh, with the doctor. But then he yeah. used to say, "Aja beti, come on, sit down with uh, here uh, near me. Let me see." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so my daughter, you are all right. You having this, and uh, just show me your tongue, and like this, and uh, such a wonderful means. He was uh, like some an old man and uh, having good knowledge about the medicine as such, and. Uh, Giving some homeopathic medicine as two, three medicines, something people are giving, but then that was not much of the medication. But the best was his uh, this love and affection he used to extend yeah, to yeah. in a very, very true manner. That I learned really this also. I, I agree with you. I think the most important thing is the care. You know, many of the patients they actually come for the follow up just because the care. That you show as a physician to the patient, so that's true. So everything apart, I think our students are restless to to hear uh, some cases from you and um, a little bit of topic. I know the topic is very interesting, uh, and um, I'm going to uh, let you uh, take the screen now. I'm going to go offline so that you can uh, teach for the next hopefully 45 minutes or one hour, and um, maybe maybe then it will be too late for us to discuss. But I, I let the screen to you. Thank you, Dr. Pankaj, for uh, accepting our invite. And um, it's an absolute pleasure. It was a very good time having this kind of a chat, which I believe uh, this kind of stories uh, inspire our students a lot. I also like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. So I will just go off screen and you can start your presentation. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So should I start my presentation? Yeah, please do, sir. Yes, sir. You can uh, share your screen. Yeah. Um, just give me a moment. Uh, hi, dear audience. Yeah, uh, sure. I hope uh, you all are uh, able to listen me well. And I'm sharing my screen. And uh, my topic will be with the case. And with this case, uh, we will be uh, not only simply learning a case, but then we will be also learning uh, one of the uh, supports that is thorough. So uh, this is a case which is a mix of uh, success as well as very bitter failure which really uh, touches my heart very badly but then 
uh, it must be shared what happens and what are the difficulties so let me go ahead with the uh, my presentation first of all uh, i must thankfully acknowledge uh, my respected sir dr lm khan for the knowledge of paradinam also i absolutely owe the responsibility of a failure uh, with a promise to my teacher for my further better efforts uh, looking forward for his guidance always and i am also thankful to dr goran and dr pratik for taking me on board and connecting you with the, this very dear and learned audience i can make out with the questions seriously you are uh, listening and asking very very important questions so let's start so uh, this is the uh, topic of the presentation milo dysplastic syndrome my learning of thyroidism in l impotency so we will be discussing a little bit of uh, uh, milo dysplastic syndrome what is it and uh, how one case i got and uh, on the indications i prescribed thyroidinum and that to in alimpotency why i will discuss and uh, what kind of success i got and what failure has come you will also know that and then uh, at the end we will be learning through this case about the uh, mitra medica part of thyroidinum so first of all let us know about milo dysplastic syndrome so uh, <coughs> dysplasia is the abnormal shape and appearance or morphology of a cell uh, here it is related to uh, rbcs wbcs platelets dysplasia of milo so you can make out the prefix milo is from the greek it means marrow bone marrow so milo dysplasia refers to the abnormal shape and appearance or morphology of the matured cells so you can make out there is a distortion of the normal morphology normal shape and appearance of rbcs wbcs and platelets so you can make out if this is the situation there will be symptoms because of the rbcs uh, issue that is uh, towards the anemia wbc means there is a problem with the protection of uh, the person from the infections and the platelets was mainly related to the bleeding aspects and all so uh, this was the whole syndrome that is why it is called milo dysplastic syndrome so i hope this very small understanding make it very clear that this syndromes from uh, comes from the greek and means a set of symptoms that occur together <clears throat> failure of the bone marrow to produce mature healthy cells mds is not a terminal disease roughly some 30% of the patients diagnosed with the milo dysplastic syndrome that is mds this type of bone marrow failure syndrome will progress to acute myeloid leukemia aml so let us go ahead with the case one boy 28 years rachit jain uh, he belongs to uh, a village nearby indore some 50 kilometers away the indore madhya pradesh and uh, <coughs> a sister came to me in my clinic with the referral of one very senior doctor of delhi uh, for the treatment on 21st march 20 so every date every word i have noted down here in this presentation is very very important to know the situation of the case in what situation i have done this case and uh, uh, very important to uh, really learn about the prescribing and very important about learning the mitra medica of thyroid so uh, you can see that uh, uh, it was a time just you first understand the situation 21st march 20 means 22nd was a janta curfew so 21st they came to me means uh, all the scenario of this covid became rampant in delhi nearby 
So the status status of the patient was uh, at the time of case perceiving that uh, patient was in Fortis Hospital, Gurgaon. And uh, Gurgaon is a nearby place from Delhi, some 50 kilometers from my place. <coughs> His uh, WBCs were 404 only. Highly prone to infection, hence cannot go anywhere. Even I also cannot go there because of the situation and because I should not pass on any uh, infection uh, to him by chance. And the doctor there told that all possibility he may survive for two weeks. So in this scenario, uh, I got the case. Lot of responsibility because uh, one very senior of the doctor uh, who had so much of uh, faith in me, even in this very precarious condition, uh, he felt I can uh, really do something. And uh, I always thank for that uh, to my father and to my teacher, Dr. L.M. Khan. Uh, so for case perceiving, the only option was video calling, which was attempted. Nothing else was there to do. So. <coughs> What was the presenting complaint? This boy, 28 years, he was presenting with extreme weakness. You can understand such a low RBC. Progressive loss of weight, body ache of wandering in nature. This was the most important uh, presenting features with which uh, patient was really suffering at that moment. Now, let us understand looks of the patient, how patient was looking. He was extremely pale, but the lips were red. Skin was little brownish, wrinkled, very lean, thin, having frontal baldness, moderately sharp features. His sister was also sitting before me was typical tubercular diathesis lady. At the outset, this patient was a typical tubercular whole family was actually like this. So unable to uh, display picture or I didn't have any consent from them. <coughs> he was conscious, oriented and could talk well. He was quite sharp answering my questions. So this was the situation. His mind was so sharp, he could understand my questions, answer me well. And uh, his uh, looks was like this, which you can sum up as a typical tubercular person bodily and mentally. So let us go into the history of the presenting complaints. In uh, August 2018, he had very severe anemia and uh, blood transfusion was done. Bone marrow revealed primary myelofibrosis. Hemoglobin used to go down very sharply within a two weeks time and like this. And uh, he was getting the repeated blood transfusion. And uh, once uh, he had uh, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, left lung and uh, ATT was given. Some whole scenario was such that Finally, when he was here in uh, Gurgaon hospital, he was given some six BMD, bone marrow transplant, six times, repeatedly. And uh, all failed. Nothing worked. As if that uh, the soil is not good to accept the seed. It was this situation. And that uh, young lady, uh, his sister, used to give uh, her bone marrow for the transplant. But then all failed. Now, if you go into the intrauterine history of the case, <clears throat> uh, he was the first child of the family. And uh, pregnancy was not really accepted by the mother. Reason? His mother was under a lot of stress in the family. Because of the marriage, you can understand what happens after the marriage in the family. Uh, females are uh, given so much of unexpected household job and uh, so many other things to do that uh, they are uh, really not able to do all the things. 
So uh, <clears throat> this was the scenario, and uh, she was into a lot of physical exhaustion, uh, vomiting, whole uh, nine months of the pregnancy. It's initially, a few of the weeks, some vomiting comes, but then it was altogether whole nine months. If you go into the past history of the whole case, the first illness of the life. See, we have to understand along with that the in the history in homeopathy history is very very important. And in the history, when you go in the past history, then in that the first illness of the life, which is at the time of delivery, first day, second day, seventh day, first month, first illness of the life. First illness may be a, a trivial symptom or may be a proper disease. So this first illness is always very, very important to know the miasm and may be useful for the purpose of prescribing also. So here the first illness of life was jaundice. Then at the age below two years, he suffered with fever, constipation, loss of weight, skin became wrinkled, hospitalized and most probably it was nothing but then primary complex that is pediatric tuberculosis and he was treated in the hospital. <coughs> so you can make out, you can just make a picture in your mind that uh, the, the child was not very well accepted by the mother. And the most important protector for the child mother, she was because of her own circumstances was not ready to get a child because definitely uh, they feel that in such circumstances, how I will bear the child and how I will rear the child. So in such circumstances, you can understand what was happening. And this was the first illness and then followed by uh, this pediatric TB and treated in the hospital. And uh, the whole scenario can make out uh, it was not very well treated. Then. At the beginning of the puberty, puberty around, uh, he started with the hair fall. <coughs> Gradually, frontal baldness developed. Treated so many with the so many gels, medications. You can understand at that age, you do anything with the gels and medications. Wherever you get such advertisement, you will do that. But then it generally comes of no use. And uh, history of uh, mild health injury was also there. Not very severe, but then some mild head injury was there. Then at uh, 23 years of age, history of uh, some uh, breakup, some uh, relationship he was having with a uh, girl. And uh, whatever maybe happened, it just went into breakup. And uh, thereafter, his reaction was he started seeing uh, the uh, sex workers and he had polluted sexual contact then had many of such contacts at a varied intervals and uh, he told once that he suffered with once uh, bloody semen CM, CM discharge uh, in such encounters so it is all connecting all connecting this history and everything so uh, this is how uh, he made his uh, um, situation and complaint and uh, uh, circumstances much more bad towards the serious disease he suffered with MDS. <clears throat> if you go into the family history, father's side, there was a history of diabetes mellitus type 2, asthma, coronary artery disease, hypertension, and from mother's side, CVA, and mother and father and sister, they were generally well as such. They were not coming up with any kind of disease. But I told you, diathesis, all the three, they were presenting with tubercular diathesis. Then uh, this boy having a habit of smoking, which even at this stage when his uh, WBC was 04, he was still smoking. You can understand the obstinacy of the guy. Then uh, alcohol somehow uh, he stopped but then uh, he started taking a lot of He was having a habit of taking this smoking, alcohol and all that. 
then uh, if you go into the physical journals uh, appetite it was like uh, properly able to eat all the meals even in this uh, precarious situation his appetite was good a good prognosis then uh, thirst it was more for the cold water then uh, he used to go uh, past stool uh, twice which was semi solid consistency craving was typical sweets and cold water in this uh, area from which the patient belongs they used to take lot of shrikhand so uh, he used to take lot of shrikhand which is sweet which is cold and everything so he used to like sweets and cold water lassi and such things and uh, uh, sleep was always late maybe due to the mobile but then whatever it is definitely his sleep was like quite late night he used to sleep and he has to lie on the abdomen <clears throat> as such no dreams he told and uh, his thermal reaction was quite chilly since beginning and uh, sweating was quite excessive especially on face and the head tongue was coated white and deep central fissure which we can learn we just now learned uh, uh, syphilinum uh, from dr gaurang so one of the features of uh, the syphilitic miasm but if you want to make it a indication for syphilinum then parallel two central fissures parallel fissure parallel fissures on the tongue typical indication of uh, syphilinum so there is a difference symptoms of the miasm and indication of the medicines they sometimes differ they cannot be same so we we should be very clear that uh, uh, these are the in, these are the symptoms showing this miasm but for this miasm you need to know the individualization of the patient on the basis of the indication of the patient so that you can individualize and select a medicine medicine is not simply selected only on the miasm but on the indication which is covering the miasm also so <clears throat> if you go into the mental picture of the uh, patient he was uh, a very angry disposition sister was younger to him and all the time she was scared that uh, what this doctor is going to ask he should not get offended and all that uh, he was such a angry disposition person and quite dominating very very dominating obstinate he will not listen anything and uh, history of grief for breakup i told you then uh, <clears throat> then coming to the prescriptions now after knowing uh, this uh, whole of the case how to understand the prescription here i told you the prescription what is the medicine nothing to say much but then uh, what i have to say i have to justify why thyroid so knowing the prescribing see i tell you that as just now we had a chart uh, check with the uh, dr gaurang so uh, you can just make out that my learning from my father from dr jugal kishore and from uh, dr elim khan sir all indicating towards the kolkata school the bengal school of prescribing so the way i am going to tell the justification of the prescription uh, this is it this is the way uh, in bengal uh, the learned homeopathic doctors used to think and decide on the prescription keeping in view the constitution the history and presentation of the symptoms these are the three basic heads when you say uh, constitution i must be very specific in constitution it becomes physical as well as mental but physical constitution is something very very important especially when when you want to learn the prescribing of kolkata school the bengal school then physical constitution something is very very important why i am saying you see in allen's keynote the 188 medicines are described 188 medicines and in that so many references of the other medicines are given so that comes to some 300 uh, or more medicine but then the complete descriptions of 188 medicines and out of that hcln has noted 
in some 110 the physical constitution you can you can understand how important the physical constitution is and that is very well mastered by the Bengal school stalwarts of homeopathy. So uh, in this uh, case, where uh, I reached to Tharadinam with the learnings of my teacher, Dr. Khan, uh, the presenting constitution was typical tubercular. And having those sexual encounters, he grafted on him the psychosis. This tubercular diathesis which has a grafting, typical grafting of psychosis. This is a very typical constitution of uh, thyroidism. Red lips, easily excited. Then going into the history, vomiting for nine months in the pregnancy. First illness of life was jaundice and repeated polluted contacts. Then presentation of the symptoms. Coldness of the skin, craving for sweets and cold. These are the presenting things. See, uh, you might be having a history in intrauterine indicating a medicine. But then the indications must be also present at that moment. You cannot simply divide them and prescribe on the basis of intrauterine. No. If in intrauterine it is arnica, Present also, presently patient will also explain and express Arnika. Patient was in the pregnancy time, thyroidinum. Presently also he was having cold skin, craving for sweets and cold. So he is presenting thyroidinum even now, right from that time. Then uh, on all these bases, medicine selected was thyroidinum in LM potency. Why LM potency? What I understood about the LM potency is that when Helmin was uh, working in his uh, cases at Paris, he used to get those days, uh, you can, uh, if you read Peter Morrill, if you read uh, Rima Headley and all those people, those who have worked about the, uh, in the search of later Helmin, um, you will come to know that uh, those days, Helmin used to get the cases of, uh, badly treated uh, STDs. It was rampant there. Like nowadays we get cases very badly treated with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, this chemotherapy and all of the cancer. So those days he used to get very badly treated cases uh, of STDs, syphilis and psychosis and all. <clears throat> and uh, he found in some of the cases, Master Hanman, that patients are having such a serious and advanced pathology. But at the same time, patient was very, very sensitive mentally and physically. So he noticed in such patients, in such group of patients, he found that uh, if he is giving syndecimal scale potency and if he is giving uh, low potency, it is not working. And if it is giving high potency, like given 6, no effect, given 200, severe aggravation. So to really manage this situation, Henman experimented and he reached to another scale of potency, which is LM potency. So what I understood in this case, such a serious pathology that anything can happen to the patient next moment. But at the same time, you can just see that how sensitive the patient is. So I chose on this basis LM potency and uh, I started with the uh, thyroidinum LM1 every three hours uh, and I made it a point to review the case every 48 hours because in hospital also they were doing the CBC test every 48 hours. So it used to give me the clinical situation of the patient, hematological situation of the patient. So if I sum up the uh, whole of the follow-up, means if I talk the whole follow-up, uh, the whole follow-up is, uh, uh, you can say, some uh, 70 days. So in that 70 days, uh, I got a follow-up of some 40 times. So describing each and every one is going to be a very big uh, talk 
and uh, it is better that uh, what i learned out of this whole uh, scenario so i just tell you this in uh, these uh, 70 days follow up what i came to know so uh, like <coughs> he uh, every 48 hours patient was talking to me that uh, sister of the patient and uh, everything was on phone because thereafter you can understand the whole lockdown was placed and all very difficult to move around so uh, they used to tell that patient is clinically feeling very good patient is feeling energetic his presenting complaint that weakness and the body ache and all those symptoms they were very gradually but improving and patient did not deteriorate mentally his appetite and cravings they did not deteriorate at all but the only thing was that his uh, hemoglobin his tlc and his dlc and the platelet count out of this if you see the tlc was something very very serious it was only 4 <coughs> it was it was increasing in a very zigzag manner like 4 became 10 but the next 48 hours this uh, 10 became 8 then after 48 hours uh, this uh, 8 became 20 so i noticed very zigzag like like it was like some brooming was going on in the bone marrow but then it was ultimately increasing 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 ultimately hemoglobin increased ultimately platelet which took lots of time to improve but then it also improved tlc increase means dlc is the proportion of it very simple you understand so <coughs> clinically he was improving gradually but then steady but hematological improvement was extremely slow and uh, uh, this uh, extreme slow but then very very zigzag manner as i told you once <coughs> he told in the whole this 70 75 days had a one bloody semen once only once and uh, what i was doing if you if you uh, read aphorism 248 of 6th edition which is describing about the 15 less semen potency the footnote of it in the footnote hand been told how to increase the cup i would urge every uh, listener that please read this aphorism 248 uh, footnote 6th edition of the agma which is describing about the 15 decimal potency and in that footnote he told how to increase the cup by increasing the cup you dilute the medicine but then you increase the potency and i noticed such a wonderful effect of increasing the cup i increase the cup say up to 20 or 25 cups and patient was also very good that he was obeying me so well because they were able to see the improvement so slowly slowly at the end when they noticed that patient has improved so much patient also decided to be uh, away from the hospital but then stay nearby so they took some uh, house on the rental near the hospital and started living there and uh, keep visiting the hospital doctors also allowed seeing the report so some uh, initial some 15 days or uh, say some 20 30 days patient there after shifted to nearby rental house left the hospital and then kept visiting the hospital finally when uh, the doctors there they saw such a significant improvement so they decided that they are going for a bone marrow biopsy of the patient to know the actual situation so peripheral blood film is nothing but the exact picture of the bone marrow but still they wanted to be quite confirmed so they did the bone marrow biopsy and uh, it revealed nothing abnormal it revealed as something normal as it should be which they tried with the bmt and six time failed but uh, here uh, some doses of thyroidinum in lm potency they did this great job of uh, 
accepting the whole scenario and correcting the whole bone marrow and uh, the biopsy came as good as normal there was nothing uh, abnormal seen which to be of any doubt or any problem and uh, it was such a significant improvement that uh, uh, doctor said all right this is good we appreciate and uh, what all you can think of you can stay back here in your rental home or if you think you can go back to your hometown so what is the next story which was quite a sad story <clears throat> this happiness of the patient family myself did not last long since patient was in the hospital and thereafter in the rental home uh, you can say since february to me they came in march only and uh, finding well uh, family thought to go back home but uh, you can understand indore was the first covid hot spot in india very serious hot spot indore so uh, i was of the view that uh, since you are going to a hot spot covid 19 hot spot uh, don't go because gurgaon is for the moment quite safer for you just stay back here but uh, you can understand they did not accept my insistence and they decided to go back promising me that we are away 50 kilometers and we will not touch even the uh, indore so there was nothing much to say on my part patient went back <clears throat> but then uh, hospital was on the advice that uh, you keep doing this monitoring of uh, uh, cbc and all that so uh, for a better report the patient visited a lab in the indore you can make out what would have happened and after a few days he started with the fever and they called me i said what have you done this is what going to be like this it is going to be covid 19 nothing else with the symptoms of course now they were quite in the interior they don't have homeopathic medicines and a lot of restriction going in door getting the medicine and uh, that also quite threatening so what they did they started with the allopathic medications for the fever which was like the very extreme blankets of antibiotics and all that and uh, since i was telling them that you are going to have this covid 19 at least start my medicine but with lots of reluctance uh, they got the medicine from somebody from the indore who have thick medicine and they started giving it then uh, i told them get the test done so that you you should be saving him as well as the family then uh, they tried those days test was on quite restriction so the state did not allow them for the test then uh, when he started with the cough and all he got his uh, ct chest done in the ct the typical ggos appearance has come that is uh, ground glass opacity of the lungs which is a typical presentation for many diseases but presently this is straight away diagnosis of uh, covid 19 on that basis admitted by the government in their hospital for the treatment and got the test done and he confirmed case of covid 19 with my medication he was there in the hospital along with that he was continuing with my medicine and he became all right discharged from the hospital his covid 19 became all right but then he started with a very severe headache very difficult to analyze on the phone and all those things what are the medicines given he is not knowing but then finally i came to know that uh, he suffered with the mucor fungi pan sinusitis it is a opportunistic infection fungal infection which finally hit his left eye caused uh, the loss of vision of the left eye and uh, ultimately what i understand hit his brain and 2nd september the patient 
really very sad to tell the whole audience patient could not survive patient died very sad affair so uh, this is how uh, uh, the success turns into the complete failure and uh, uh, so <coughs> this is what uh, we are to learn that how to really make your patient understand the family of the patient to understand that if you are foreseeing something for the patient so they should agree to the doctor suppose logically speaking if they would have heard of my advice to stay back in gurgaon i would be very happily presenting before you this is the case my plan was that such cases of mds they should at least survive 6 months because all chances of relapse there i'm not saying i'm so happy presenting i have cured a case of mds no i cannot but then i'm saying i could see i could show the uh, ray of hope in such cases also with the right prescribing right potency selection and uh, in that uh, this increasing cup uh, i wish uh, there is a question also on this i will be coming on this uh, then uh, <coughs> let me just uh, uh, before uh, just going to start with the post case study of uh, thyroidinum uh, from the book wisdom of sarcodes by uh, dr elim khan uh, let me just see if i can really answer uh, certain questions i have uh, received here mm, just give me a moment <coughs> so thank you yash soni for uh, appreciating this case and uh, srishti sablok brilliant case and brilliantly presented sir yeah there is a question there are two questions but uh, there are actually one question from the two person one uh, uh, jinal asking depending on condition or environment constitutional medicine can change or not and srishti sablok is asking sir is the constitutional remedies one only for one individual throughout his life and uh, jyoti auja <clears throat> so these are the two questions of the first two persons a uh, lot of confusion regarding this uh, constitutional thing dear friends you must understand that uh, Henman never used the word constitutional prescribing. Henman used the word constitution in the whole organs of medicine. I think at two places, maybe a little more. One is <clears throat> in the aphorism five, where he is talking about the accessory circumstances. In that he says physical constitution, and in he bracket he says. especially for the chronic diseases then constitution he talks in the proving aphorisms where he says that uh, uh, somewhere in the proving and uh, one in the case checking when you are going to find out the genus epidemic so some two three places he talked about but then he did not talk constitutional prescribe henman always told that uh, totality of symptoms henman was also always very specific to the terminologies he rather avoided to make the terminologies so that one should not really get confused so for my knowledge goes this constitutional prescribing thing have come after dr j t kant he also meant the same the totality of symptoms now let's understand the constitution of the person just imagine get some photographs uh, nowadays people are preserving uh, photographs of uh, the ultrasound when everyone is in the womb of the mother 
so take that photograph and till whatever is your age some 50 30 40 whatever <clears throat> and see your photographs don't you think it is changing if you go and see your grandmother's photograph right from the childhood till you know you are just sitting beside them and you will find that uh, how changed the grandmother has become so it is a complete constitution is quite a dynamic thing and uh, all the accessory circumstances seven accessory circumstances had been noted in the uh, aphorism 5 all those they change our physical constitution even even our mental uh, temperament also so they keep on changing when a disease come it make another change so when it is changing when it is dynamic then how can we think of that uh, uh, there can be one medicine for throughout my life and all all the time my constitutional if say natremure then anything happens i will take natremure no this is not hanmans homeopathy i don't know about others i'm just sharing with you uh, my understanding before you my learning before you in kolkata nobody goes like this they simply go by indications they simply prescribe on the indications on the totality of the case and they get the result and uh, it 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 may be quite changing so nothing like this don't get confused don't find shortcuts there is no such shortcuts read hanmans cases in his lesser writings you will get much better and uh, uh, clearer idea so uh, there are certain questions on uh, increasing cup so let me see if any other question then i will straight away go to the increasing cup yeah i am coming you know many many of the uh, learned audience they are asking for the uh, increasing cup so uh, it is good that uh, people are quite conscious and very careful about what i am talking just give me a moment let me just get a avnon um, book and make you learn out of that so as i told you that uh, in the avnon 6th edition if you have the c 248 aphorism of 6th edition of the ognon by master hanley and in this 248 6th edition it is quite a lengthy aphorism and this is not the place and time and the topic to describe the whole aphorism but then <coughs> i have a uh, youtube channel with my name dr pankaj adwal where i have been explaining the whole of the aphorisms one by one including the introduction to the ognon of medicine by master so you can just check out with that and uh, you can just listen those uh, explanations of each of the aphorisms very uh, uh, meticulously and very in a very very great detail i have spoken on so uh, let me just tell you something about the increasing cup just give me a moment so you understand how to prescribe alem potency first of all i tell you the q potency this lm potency they are uh, they are available in the pills first of all so when you say 01 the uh, mother nature of uh, preparing a 01 of any medicine say thyroidinum that is 3c so uh, take uh, one pill of the uh, thyroidinum 01 and in uh, this one pill is to be crushed on a paper and uh, Uh, put it in a hundred ml of water in a bottle, and give it a ten strokes. 
so there is a flexibility written that uh, uh, you can think of uh, giving more than one pill but it depends on the pathology so just learn the standard method then uh, you should know what are the exceptions available the standard method is one pill of 01 in 100 ml of water in a bottle put it and give 10 strokes and now the medicine is prepared to dispense how patient will take it uh, he will just stroke it 10 times again one teaspoon that is 5 ml he will take out of it and dissolve it in a cup of water and stir it very vigorously now standard method is take one teaspoon and throw the rest but then there are certain uh, variations uh, and means has allowed so <clears throat> this is the standard method prescribing those who are uh, really doing with lm potency they know this but then in this one variation which i used that is i call increasing cup method so this is what i just read it from the uh, aphorism 248 book note it is if he is usually unusually excited and sensitive a teaspoon full of this solution may be put in a second glass of water thoroughly stirred and teaspoon full doses similarly prepared each full full of doses or more may be given there are patients of so great sensitiveness that a third or fourth glass similarly prepared may be necessary each such prepared glass must be made fresh daily the globule of the uh, high potency is best crushed in a few grains of sugar of milk which the patient can put in a vial and be dissolved in a requisite quantity of water so when i am giving to the patient standard way 10 stroke 1 teaspoon in a glass of water cup of water dissolved and taken 1 teaspoon but then if patient is quite sensitive not responding and all that this 1 teaspoon is to be taken and again to be dissolved in another cup or another glass of water stir well and take this so what you have done you have already diluted medicine further diluted but you understand the meaning of dilution in homeopathy the medicine content has come down but the potency has gone up like this so going from second to the third third to fourth cup all the time you are reducing the quantity and you are uh, increasing the potency and in the lm potency if you go into the mathematics of it you will come to know that uh, it is quite a different kind of ratio of the solvent in the solute so that is what is the discussion of the uh, 15 decimal but uh, in a very very short way i try to make you under make you understand uh, about the uh, increasing cup method somebody is asking is it a plussing method no it is not a plussing method <clears throat> it is this as i told you i don't know the name of another name of it i simply know increasing cup method simple what i learned from uh, hanmin and from all my teachers that they used to be very simple in the terminologies because too much of terminology has uh, really put the students of homeopathy in lots of uh, problem as i told you about the constitutional uh, prescribing so <coughs> i hope every one of you um, are uh, able to make out some clarity on this topic uh, i wish to have one or two comments on this still you have uh, some question on it on it uh, before i uh, proceed for another 5 minutes for explaining the whole of the set of symptoms of the thyroidinum Uh, let us just have one or two comments from every one of you those who are uh, still uh, listening me if they are okay with the understanding of increasing cup method or still they have a question i am here uh, more than happy to answer you again please <coughs> looking forward for your messages
Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Ajinath, it is uh, increasingly dilution, but uh, mm, it is diluted in the terms of quantity, but then it is highly potentized in terms of quality. Yeah. Thank you so much, Riva Singh. And uh, <coughs> see, uh, uh, Shamla, I have a uh, number of cases of uh, cancer, and you understand in homeopathy they come after doing all this. So I find quite good effect, even when chemotherapy is going. But then does not mean no side effects will come. Yes, it minimizes. Means that my medicine in LM potency in this scenario, well, patient is taking this chemotherapy and all, uh, my medicine works. That is there. This I experienced in number of cases of cancer. So uh, good enough, uh, Dr. Ochi. So uh, let's just... Uh, Go ahead, try this increasing method. You will be amazed. You will be surprised that how uh, this also works. When I learned it first time in Kolkata, in NIH, uh, I was also surprised. Yaar, ye kaise ho sakta hai? How all this is possible? But then number of cases, it worked. I tell you, my first uh, encounter with the NIH case where... Uh, uh, when I started uh, my course there, the IH, this course is now abolished, but then it was earlier designed to create teachers. So <coughs> in this course, we are to go regress training of uh, hospital along with the classes for the subjects we did not thoroughly read in the uh, DHMS. My days, my it was DHMS first. So uh, there was a case of rheumatic fever. Of a you understand the age of the rheumatic fever it was just 15, 16 year old boy, and uh, it was the bed of uh, allotted to Dr. L M Khan sir, and I was the uh, attending physician uh, to assist Dr. Khan sir, <clears throat> and. Uh, he saw and uh, next day he went for a conduction of examination in Trivandrum and uh, I was there to look after the case and uh, those days no such mobile and everything was there. So uh, patient went very worse. He was having more than 103 fever and uh, his heart was pounding like anything. And uh, I asked for the pediatrician and practice medicine teacher to come and uh, uh, suggest what is to be done. And uh, <clears throat> since patients used to come there were quite uh, low in their socioeconomic status and patient was in a very bad situation. And uh, I may be mistaken, but then I did a thing that uh, I collected money from all my friends and uh, I brought uh, all kind of food and uh, the medicines prescribed by the pediatrician and all for him. That is penicillin and everything. And the first shot given, and that was the shot, not to the patient, but then it became a news all over the institute that in the LM Khan's case, allopathic medicine was given. And I was really not knowing all such things. Then uh, next day, sir has come. And uh, immediately he came to know and he just, he was quite annoyed with me and uh, uh, he was on the visit, on the visit, I was there and he saw the case, I think in two minutes, he said, okay, Natremure, L impotency increasing cup. That is my first understanding. What was the Natremure? Natremure was his thin neck and his extreme timidity to pass urine in front of anybody. <coughs> and in the evening, I went to meet uh, Dr. Elim Khan, sir, to his home. Sir, this patient is very serious. He will die. And he made me out of the uh, home. Go, why are you here? Go and see how patient dies. He is taking my medicine, Dr. Muir. 
and morning you report me how is the patient so as per the instruction i was there and uh, i was having a night duty i could uh, observe him all the whole night and how he gradually improved with natremur and uh, that patient became much much better with the natremur lm1 increasing cup that was my first learning so <clears throat> this is it about the increasing cup see when uh, uh, i am asked why not to think of tuberculinum why thyroidinum but then where are the indications indications are for thyroidinum that's what i'm saying that uh, having a tuber di tubercular diathesis can never be an indication for prescribing tuberculinum or bacillinum no and yes at one point of time this indication for such medicines may come moreover i must tell you when he suffered with the very severe covid symptom he recovered from bacillinum only i prescribed but those time all those indications this they just came over like this so it is the indications i very clearly mentioned you about thyroidinum such indications are not there of bacillinum i'm going to tell rest of this i'm going to tell the whole materia medica of uh, thyroidinum which is pertaining to this case only it's not i'm not going to tell the extra symptoms i'm going to tell all the symptoms that how many symptoms of thyroidinum are there you can compare it whether they are there in bacillinum to you can make out very easily <coughs> yeah that's a wonderful question uh, dr krishna mohan rao uh, he says can the lm potency be used in chronic mental condition uh, when there is no response for other potencies please clarify in my understanding uh, i have found i did not find very good result uh, with the lm potency in psychiatric cases and uh, i found wonderful results with the very high potencies like cm 10m 50m like this so uh, what my understanding is that uh, in such cases if we give the higher potencies in centesimal they work better than uh, lm no uh, sharayu patil you are to take a pill of medicine once only and you are increasing the cup from that bottle you are not again and again using a pill you are to go zero to when that bottle will be over <clears throat> That's a wonderful question, uh, Srishti Sablo. Yes, I heard many times saying, Dr. Khan, that I have prescribed in so many of the flabby and uh, obese patients to prescribe natremur. So, see, uh, the most important thing is that when in prescribing, in prescribing, what I understood is. i am also learning but then what i understood seeing the so many cases of dr khan that uh, uh, there are some very specific standard symptomatology of one particular medicine that's one standard but then there are so many exceptions available that for example a, a very obese patient having very typical characteristic emaciated neck in that it is only natremur natremur and natremur and it will work wonder so as such there are certain exceptions which is there and uh, we have to really go ahead with those things so it is not something very very contradictory feature for natremur to not to give in such obese patient but then just look at the emaciated leg that's very important so this is it so uh, allow me to just go ahead with the 
<coughs> symptoms which you can be seeing in the whole of the case which i have noted down here just i will take another 5 minutes you can ask questions or we can uh, put the session off that uh, we understand this thyroidism is a sacco and uh, whatever we have all the uh, symptomatology of thyroidism it is a clinical proving Mm, under the research committee of american institute of homeopathy in 1963 64 proving were carried out by uh, penos rogers stephenson and uh, in this proving double blind method were applied it's a very very uh, good way of doing the proving then uh, one dr sc ghosh of kolkata he has written a book clinical experience with some rare nosorts and he has very clinically described many cases of uh, thyroidism and their indications i told you kolkata people they talk indications very very clearly and on that basis uh, he told number of cases of uh, crf treated with the uh, thyroidism and uh, after learning this i also uh, could find out some cases of thyroidism in uh, crf really work wonder so the preparation of this uh, thyroid gland is from the sheep bull calf the thyroid gland of sheep bull and calf and the mother tincture is prepared by maceration of the fresh gland taken out of it uh, its totality maceration is done in mixture of water alcohol glycerin diluted at 1 by 20th of the fresh organ then further decimal centesimal potencies are prepared and uh, if you see the general modalities of the thyroidism <coughs> aggravation least cold cold bathing least exertion see this this was just keep that case in the mind and uh, uh, amelioration lying on abdomen appearance thin emaciated dry lips falling hair coldness of the body now right, like if you go through the whole symptomatology i am telling you you will find at one or the other stage right from the childhood right from the intrauterine history till i got the patient you will find so many of the symptoms like this throughout the whole of the scenario you can understand that maybe his constitution was changing but then presentation of the remedy was not changing a remedy basically for syphilis then psychosis and finally so chili rarely warm blooded want of uh, vital heat chilliness temperament nervous built thin emaciated rapid emaciation red lips personal history of the case the childhood jaundice associated with vomiting family history and past history of diabetes mellitus in the family then uh, irritable and tired mood sometimes irritable quarrelsome sometimes euphoric capriciousness tranquility serenity appetite always want something more interesting to eat ravenous uh, with emaciation this her his, his sister used to tell doctor sir he always want something interesting to eat how can we create all the time new food for him <coughs> desire sweets cold drinks difficult to fall asleep wake up without reason dry lips medicine is a remedy vomiting of newborn with or without medicine or also with the family most of the symptoms are an outcome of over indulgence in the sexual activity it has got profound influence on any mental disturbance during puberty childbirth you can understand in the pregnancy how mother was in too much of mental uh, disturbance injuries due to blow fall bruises pathology pernicious anemia but here it is a different kind of anemia so this is all about uh, the uh, basic symptomatology which was present here in this case and uh, turn out to be uh, success as well as a great failure on my part but then uh, good to learn from this a thyroidism the indications of the thyroidism and uh, i wish that uh, every one of you uh, must have uh, really realized the indications of thyroidism especially in such very precarious case and uh, 
you know so many of the questions i answered still i am asking every one of you you still have certain questions please write me i can answer your questions or uh, anything else but then finally i must say you know the very big thank you to every one of you for this patient hearing and uh, looking forward if you have any questions i must answer you all and uh, <clears throat> yes dr pratik uh, anything else further uh just a second sir okay okay so i hope i i think all the uh, questions of the participants are answered by you so <laughs> they look contented no more questions so thanks a lot sir for uh, accepting the invitation and joining us today it was absolutely a great learning for all of us especially about the way of your case thinking your case analysis this was something different for the participants to learn and the, the in the way you presented the case the detailed follow up the explaining about potency the philosophy and everything so overall it was a complete uh, Treat for all of us, and uh, we got to learn learn something new today. So I think, uh, yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for taking today. me on board, and uh, thank you all the participants to be, you know, patient hearing and asking some wonderful questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sir, if you can, if you can share your email ID with the participants, or I'll I'll write it down so that if some people they want to write to you, they can. Uh, uh, I'm, write I'm writing. This is Dr. Pankaj eighty nine at gmail dot com. Dr. Pankaj eighty nine at gmail dot. Yeah, thank you so okay. much. Yeah, I have uh, written it in the comment section. So, <coughs> if you have any further questions, you can write it to sir. And if you have any other queries, also you can. Some of some participant was asking about your cleaning, so you can write to him, and uh, he'll help you further. So, that's all for today. So, thank you, sir, once again. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Hope, it was quite uh, long. We are yeah. glad okay. to we are glad to asso be associated with you, and we hope to have you. Once again, in some future session with us. So thanks a lot, sir, for joining us. Sure, definitely, I'm there. Yeah, thank you okay. so much. Thank okay, you. Sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Bye. 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 So, uh, thank you all the participants for uh, listening uh, to the session. I think it was a great, great learning for all of us. And uh, once again, would like to. share about for some of the participants who were uh, who joined us late the two books if you have if you don't have your copy yet about the decoding mental rubrics and materia medica of nosodes and sarcodes you should have it soon you can write to me if you want to get this book so i'll help you out Doctor Pratik Jain at gmail dot com or the home pathic hub at gmail dot com. You can write to me. I'll help you with the books. And uh, next Thursday, see you all once again in another interesting session of MM series. We have a very special guest with us in the next session. So till then, take care. Bye bye.